So there's a five step process. It's incredibly fascinating because, you know, there's a whole notion of our entrepreneurs born or made. Right. And, and so you have a process that you've developed over the time and the experience that you have, that clearly identifies how to spot opportunities, how to, how to appreciate, how to, how to go after these opportunities. And I think therein lies the profound nature of seed do repeat the book that you've brought forth through all of this research and learning. And my question now, Dr. White, is once you've ex established yourself, so now you're an entrepreneur, you can, you know, you can be referred to as an entrepreneur. What is the best way to stay on top of these incredible trends that are coming at you? They could be headwinds. They could be tailwinds. Regardless, how do you stay on top of that? Are you are you espousing taking these five steps and goes over and over where you're able to quickly identify, you know, these trends or opportunities? And are there is a trend interchangeable with an opportunity? Um, well, that's a really good question. So I think you know sometimes trend. Well, trends by their very nature come and go, uh, but opportunities come and go as well. So we all know lots of examples of people and companies that have launched too soon or too late. Um, you mentioned the pandemic. Um, you know, there were companies that were trying to do, um, you know, home delivery for groceries uh, 20 years ago. But, you know, during the pandemic, there was an opportunity for that, to, that product to really come to fruition. So, you know, with regard to your question, how do you stay on top of trends? You know, it does go back to, I think, being curious, being interested. Um, you know, that was one of the things I noticed in my mom. She was she was interested in in lots of things and and always interested in other people and their stories and in experiences. There's a great book that I like to recommend called The Medici Effect, uh, written by a guy named Franz Johansson. And in that book, he talks about the intersection uh, and, and that, that ideas and creativity comes from the intersection of different fields, different perspectives, um, different cultures. So, and I, I, I asked, I have my students read this book because that idea, the question you ask, you know, how do you stay alert? Um, and, and, you know, how do you find these best opportunities? It's really about exposing yourself so to the world and to experiences and being engaged in the world. So I encourage my students, you know, where they can to travel. Um, I encourage them to read. I encourage them to talk to people and ask lots of questions. Um, so it's really about being interested and, and um, exploring things. And then, you know, I always recommend keeping an idea journal. So when an idea comes to you, write it down or when something interesting comes to you and be especially looking for things that surprise you. When something surprises you, there's probably something there. And then the last thing I'll say is, you know, one of the quotes that I always use with my students and they remind me of it all the time is if you want to find an opportunity, look for a problem. And I've got lots of great stories of students that, um, you know, use that really to go out and find something that they could could work on, um, you know, entrepreneurially. That, that's that's such incredible perspective. And, you know, you know, with IdeaGen Global, we believe in this notion of cross sector collaboration, which is exactly what you're talking about, where you have folks in a room or conversing that typically wouldn't be from across sectors. And then that's where the learnings begin. We believe that a lot of the world's most vexing issues can be solved by bringing together folks from across sectors because the learnings may lie one sector over, healthcare, finance, you name it. So I love that you mentioned that, of course. And so customers, how do you win over your first customers, your first investors, your first business partners? Do you feel there's any single key element to successfully 
obtaining these customers, investors, business partners for the first time. I do. I think there's several elements. One of the most important is as vision combined with passion. So, you know, if you as an entrepreneur, hopefully you're going to have a passion for what you're doing and you're going to be able to communicate that vision. So so people follow visionaries and uh, people are willing to work with with people that they trust. So it's it's a combination of, of having a vision, being able to tell that story and then and then being trustworthy and acting with integrity, because at the end of the day, people work with people they trust and they like. And, uh, you know, one of the I, I used to um, I was in Cincinnati before I was here in Tampa. And one of the entrepreneurs there said that uh, the, the the way to succeed in business is to always do what you say you're going to do. And, you know, I think there's some real power in that. If people know that you're trustworthy and, um, you know, that you're, um, you know, I guess the other thing I would add is that you're listening. So with that first customer, if you listen to them, you're going to understand how to solve their problem. With that investor, if you listen to them and understand their agenda, you're going to be able to work more effectively with them. With that partner, the same thing is true. So, you know, it's it's about it's about being transparent and trustworthy, uh, but it's also about having that vision and, and having people um, and, and being able to share your passion so that people can get excited about it. That's right. And we've seen that time and time again. You think, you know, you think uh, vision and passion, you think Steve Jobs, you think Bill Gates, you think, you know, so many folks along the way, why them and not someone else? Well, because they have the passion and they certainly have the vision. And so I'd like to go back to referencing your book, See, Do, Repeat. This is all about the book in this book talk today on IdeaGen TV. I want to reference your book and ask how should one invest their personal time to become a better entrepreneur? I know we've talked about various aspects of that so far, but how should they be deliberate and investing their time to become a better entrepreneur? I think there's a number of things. Um, I think it's, you know, one of the um, one of the things that I have in my book is an assessment that the reader can take to kind of understand their areas of strengths and maybe areas they'd like to improve. So I think I think step one is really a bit of self-assessment, whether you use the assessment in my book or whether you um, you know, you're self-aware or you take some other self-assessment, but really understanding yourself and where your, um, where your str strengths are and where your weaknesses are. Um, you know, we, we will become, uh, if we're going to become great, it's usually because we emphasize and build on our strengths. So I'm not necessarily tr saying try to come over, overcome all your weaknesses, but when it comes to the competencies in the book, I think sort of understanding where you are and what you're comfortable with. Um, some entrepreneurs I've worked with are really great at the idea generation side, but they don't have the skills or the confidence or self-efficacy to take action. So they may need to find a partner or a collaborator, as you mentioned. Um, you know, and, and an important point there is, again, make sure you're not finding, you know, when you're building your team, you've got to make sure you find people that bring uh, you know, to fill in the gaps. You don't want to repeat yourself. You want to find people that fill in the gaps. Uh, but I think it's more about, you know, understanding yourself a little bit more and understanding that, um, you know, you don't have to do it all um, and that it is about a practice. You show up every day just like you might to, um, you know, if you do yoga, for example, it's not about perfecting the poses. It's about showing up and practicing every day. And, and there's, um, you know, there's, you know, I believe very strongly in that. It's, it's like the law of the harvest. Um, you know, these things take time. So invest in yourself, choose yourself, choose something that you really love to do. And then, um, you know, surround yourself with really great people. Incredible, incredible advice and incredible perspective. And so I'd like to zero in on you, Dr. White, for a moment. And I'd like to ask you, 
when faced with a challenge, a new challenge, perhaps, what is your decision making process? What does that look like? That's a really good question. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, challenges are about dealing with our fears. And one of the chapters in the book, uh, I, uh, I, I focus in on fear of failure because that's what keeps a lot of people, I think, from um, taking steps. And it's also uh, fear can often keep us from seeing reality and being able to make changes that we need to make uh, because, because challenges, obstacles, failures, those are usually just messages that we're on the wrong path. And so um, over time, this didn't come really early in my life. It's taken a few years, but over time, I've learned that step one is really to try to understand, um, you know, how I got where I am and, and um, you know, what it is that might be keeping me stuck or what that challenge might be. And then um, figuring out a way to, to deal with it. Um, I read a book, another book many years ago called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And it was at a time in my life where I was really struggling and it gave me lots of insights about building a, um, a multifaceted life where I always had something to go back to, whether that's a personal faith or, and, or a family, um, you know, what, whatever that might be, something that can help you get perspective or someone that can help you get perspective. So when I'm faced with the decision, I, you know, I, I try to step back. I try to look at how I got there. And then I also try to go back to, you know, what I call my true north, um, you know, figuring out what my purpose is in whatever it is that I'm doing. And I'll give you an example. When, when I first started with building these entrepreneurship programs, there were lots of opportunities that came our way. And sometimes having an abundance of opportunities can be a challenge. And so I had to figure out what my real mission and vision was. And for me, it's always been about, does it bring value to my students? And so for programmatic uh, kinds of partnerships or uh, ventures that I might pursue when I have a decision there, I always go back to what that, that value is, you know, why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I think it would be about building in sort of a safety net as well as, as you know, understanding why I'm doing what I'm doing. Incredible, incredible insights and incredibly inspiring for the simple reason that I absolutely 1 million percent agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you because it's always important, I think, for entrepreneurs to have a plan B, C, maybe even D, multiple lines of income, perhaps to have multiple lines of revenue in the business where one product stops selling, you have another, you know, so there's a, a, there's a whole myriad of ways to think about that. But I think having those uh, opportunities and, and sort of the plan B's, I like to call them in my world, are really important. And so um, and to those that are watching, from across the world and any country out of the 193 member states, perhaps of the United Nations. And I will mention that in a moment. What would you say to those that are considering starting a new venture as an entrepreneur? What's the most rewarding aspect of starting your own business, Dr. White? Well, that's a, that's a really great question. And, and although it may vary somewhat uh, from individual to individual, I think for, for me, what I would say is that it's the, the knowledge that you're solving a problem. Um, you know, you, you brought up the having a plan B, you know, in entrepreneurship, we call that pivoting. So I always tell my students when they are, you know, unsure about the direction they need to go to go back to the problem. Because at the end of the day, an entrepreneurial venture is about problem solving. So the, the reality that you're, that you're doing something meaningful, leaving a legacy, making a change in the world, transforming lives, making somebody else's life better through the product or service um, that, that you're offering to the world, to me, that's the most exciting thing 
it's really a creative problem solving process. And, and much like what you're doing with idea, Jen, um, you know, we, we can solve the world's problems. Um, I believe one entrepreneurial venture at a time. And I, I, I'm such a fan of the power of entrepreneurship and, and its ability to bring together the world and to, to change the world. And for me, that's what is so excited about it. It's transformative uh, problem solving, really. Transformative problem solving. And at Idea Gen, as you know, Dr. White, we are focused on with the virtual backdrop of the 17 global goals of the United Nations. Important to note that those are 17, let's call them problems, problem sets, eradicating poverty, hunger, empowering women and girls. How do we do that? Global partnerships, access to energy, et cetera. And in 2015, all 193 member states, every single one, agreed unanimously to these 17 goals and that they would help to work together to achieve those goals by 2030. We're in that runway, right? We're in that runway to 2030. And there's a, there's a myriad of problem sets around that that I think entrepreneurs across the world could look at to create and fill the void of what the issue is. So I want to thank you so very much for your insights today, for your inspiration, for the book, See, Do, Repeat. We encourage our global listeners to go to Amazon, go wherever the book is available to purchase the book. Here's a copy of the book, See, Do, Repeat. Dr. White, where, where can folks find out more about the book and where can they find out more about you, your work, the End Factor podcast and everything that you're doing. Thank you, George. I appreciate the opportunity to share that. So I uh, I have a brand new website. It's Dr. Rebecca White, just D-R-R-E-B-E-C-C-A-W-H-I-T-E, drrebeccawhite.com. Um, you can also find the End Factor podcast on Apple um, Podcasts or Spotify or anywhere else that you listen to podcasts. But you can also find out about the book and the podcast at, at drrebeccawhite.com. I'm also on LinkedIn. I would love to connect with you there. And you can also read more about my work at the University of Tampa at uh, ut.edu. So I, I'd love to, um, to share more of that with, with, you know, because again, I believe that big problems can be solved with this entrepreneurial mindset. And I, I love what you're doing at Idea Gen, and I appreciate you sharing C Do Repeat with your audience. Dr. Rebecca White, Professor of Entrepreneurship, Director of Corporate Boards, and host of the N Factor podcast, and also author of C Do Repeat.